have you seen um, Bob and Cleaner? Yes. Yeah. Have you they're, seen they're the book? Swan. Have you seen the verse one yet? I've been inside it. Have you? Yes. True. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that on Thursday, I think, but then they're going to bring it over here to the lighthouse, yes. and that's where it's going to be set up, and mm. so I'm going to be telling stories in there. Yeah, fantastic. Me and my cousin, this one. This one here, yes. my, my cousin. So we're going to be telling stories in there. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so you do a bit of storytelling? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go into school sometimes yeah. and do some, some so talk talking and that for yeah. the children, which is good. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's really, really funny, you know, because especially with little ones, when you tell stories of what you did when you were little, then all of a sudden all the hands go up and they tell you what they do and what their dads or their mums did, you yes. know. So it's really good just listening to the kids sometimes because yeah. they come out with some good, some funny things. <laughs> Well, they say it, how they see it. Yeah, that's right. It is. Mm. It's how they see you and what they see. Because when I talk in my language to them, you know, mm. they, they just look and they wonder, you know, what it's all about. So I mm. tell them in English then. Yep. yep. So, which is good. Why do they call you auntie? Hmm? Everyone calls you auntie. Why is that? Yeah. I don't know. I think because it, it's a respect. Yeah. It's respect. But I've got a lot of them that call me nana too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you're sort of like a mother figure for a lot of people. Mm. Well, you see, it's like when, when my sister passed away, her children became my children. Yes. So most of them now, they're all, they, I'm their nana. Yes. Yeah, so yes. which is good. It's yeah. good but feeling. even like a broader community. Yeah, you know, even you people a, here in Adelaide. Thing. Yeah, when yeah. I'm doing my, it's just got, because it, it sounded a bit funny at first because when the ministers started calling, and I got a bit, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, yeah. but I think it's because it's respect. For, yes. for being an older, being an elder, yes. yeah, and even when people, you know, like some of the people that I see and some of the Aboriginal people, you know, mm. if you even know I don't know them, we all acknowledge each other, mm. and some of the younger ones will always call me auntie, you know, yes. which is good, yes. yeah, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Mm. And of course, it's not just Aboriginal people, there's a lot of white people. Yeah, 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 well. they do too now, yeah. Like some of the kids that I knew at school, yes. you know, they'll come up and say, hello, Aunty Josie, and I've got to look at them to, th to think who they are. I remember faces, but not so much names. And some of them are mums and dads now. Mm. So, you know, but it's always nice when they do come up and say hello to you. Mm. Yeah, it makes you feel good. And that's obviously, you know, when, when you have all the work, and it's not just kids either. No, I mean, no, no. Everyone in the first Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, a lot of people just call you out. Yep, they do. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be a thing. <laughs> it has got to be a bit of a, a yeah. thing. Yeah. That, that obviously, you are an elder. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, that, but obviously, white people calling you auntie transcends the mm. the the elder thing. Yeah. So that's that's more of a a mother to all sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a heavy responsibility. I know, but uh, you know, it's sort of as I said, it's just, just to be a respect. Yeah. And that, and, and I've sort of got used to it now, so mm. and I don't mind it so much. But it was a bit hard mm. getting used to it, you know, and mm. having all these white people mm. call me auntie. Yeah. Not so much the black people, because yeah. you, you know. But it's, yeah. yeah, but I don't mind it now. But as I said, it's, it's just respect, and uh, yeah. well, that's nice. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and I guess it's uh, that, that would have started how long ago? Oh. A couple of years ago now, I should have met when I first started doing doing my little thing, my little welcomes around the place. Because mm. I didn't think it was going to get to be like it is now. Mm. And there's people, you know, ringing up from Canberra because mm. they've got organisations here in Adelaide, mm. and they're coming down to do something, or from Brisbane or somewhere. And you know, and they say, well, we got your name from such and such a person. Mm. I said, oh yeah, okay, you know. So then they get get in touch. Yeah, so so I've got just, a famous welcome. Well, yeah, I guess, but it just sounds, you know, like people from those places, you never think that you're going to get phone calls from people from over there mm. and, you know, asking you to do something here in Adelaide for them. Mm. Could, could you um, do a Ghana welcome for us now for the camera? You want me to do a little one for Is you? Is there a Ghana farewell? Uh, yes, it says, knock on you. Knock on you. Let's see you later. See you later. Yeah. That's good, good actually. Mm. What, what about um, um, Ghana, a Ghana welcome? For a big crowd, it's a Nai Marning, right? And for a little crowd, it's Nina Marning. And we're just now reclaiming our Ghana language mm. and we're just finding out how, the, how we fit into our Ghana heritage. Yes. And from that, um, well, my, my grandmother's father was a white man. Yes. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, no. Uh, there was four Adams sisters, right? Yes. And there was uh, Tom Adams came from England, yes. and when he got off the boat, he was living up at Clare for a while. Oh, yes. So and he ended up marrying a, a traditional woman called Kanata, yeah. right?
right? So Kanata and Tom mm. Adams lived up at Clare. Mm. So they had two sons mm. called um, Tom and Tim Adams, mm. right? So when Kanata passed away, mm -hmm. the government took the farm that they had, took mm. the farm off them. Why? Don't know why. Because that's what they did. Yeah, they did. They just took the farm off them and that. Anyway, uh, Tom Adams took put his two sons into this home called Penindi, yeah. and uh, over in Port Lincoln. Yeah. So they grew up in Port Lincoln, Tom and Tim Adams. Yeah. So they so there's quite a few people that went from Port Lincoln when it closed, mm. and they went up to the Riverland, Naranjiri, then Raukin, and over to Point Pierce, and that's mm. so Tom and Tim Adams came over to Point Pierce, mm. and out of that, uh, I think T Tom Adams was my great great grandfather or great uncle but there was they had four I forget who he married anyway mm -hmm. so there was four Adam sisters my one was my grandmother mm -hmm. and the others a Sansbury a Angie and a Wilson so mm -hmm. so we're related to all those people so there's a big clan yeah. of people around yeah. and that so uh, and with that so that's how I, I didn't even know that because our grandparents never told us sure. much about who we were and where so we come from Mm, so my grand my, and my my grandfather, mm. my papa, um, I'm not sure where he came from, mm. but I've always known that he was Naranga mm. and that. So mm. so we just sort of followed him. But but to, to look at him, I think he had a bit of Indian in him somewhere because mm. some of my brother looks really Indian because mm. some my brother grew up here in Semaphore. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you saw that place down there, um, Glanville Hall. Yes. That's where all the, the um, Aboriginal boys grew up there. Mm. Yeah, it was called St. Francis House. Mm. And, uh, and that's um, my brother and Charlie mm. Perkins, John Moriarty, Harry Charlie Russell. Perkins. Yeah, they mm. all grew up there. And then Malcolm Cooper, all the boys grew up down there. Mm. And I sort of grew up with them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it was good. So that's where they came from. They were Mostly the boys was from Alice Springs. Yeah. And, and John was from Buralulu, I think, John Oriati. Yeah. yeah, from up that way anyway. And Charlie's from Alice, of course. Yeah. And then Malcolm and Harry. Harry came from over New South Wales. Yeah. So it's sort of like a boarding school? So? Yeah, it was like one of the ministers, Father Smith, yeah, yeah. brought him down, brought yeah. the boys down when he yeah. went up to Alice. So yeah. they all grew up over here at seven four, yeah. played sport and yeah. got jobs. And they, they were all pretty well known down yeah. this area. Yeah. Too much, I think, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So that, that was your introduction to, to this area? Yeah, well, when I was about 15, I think, I was back here in Adelaide because yeah. we lived up in Alice Springs for about six years, seven years. Yeah, yeah. I ended my schooling up there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and, uh, which was good. Yeah. I've got good memories. It's Nina Mani, that means hello, how are you? Yes. Mm. So, how are you? I'm very well, thank <laughs> That's you. That's good. <laughs> I'll knock on you later. Yeah, I'll knock on you later. <laughs> <laughs>